Hi guys, if you've come to see what reinforcement learning is all about in layman's terms, you've come to the right place. I'm using reinforcement learning to try to train autonomous driving cars in Kala Simulator. And that's a very useful technique for me to sort of try to, you know, to do it the most efficient way, given I'm in the simulator. And I've got a definition of what reinforcement learning is. But in a nutshell, it's all about the agent exploring the environment, getting feedback from the environment. It has a system of what is being rewarded for, like trying to do the right thing or achieving a certain outcome. And by learning over time, hopefully it will get you there, whatever you're trying to achieve. And as a result, you will learn this policy or model that will allow you to use the model every time, you know, to, to make the car drive the right way. All right. So the most important elements or the features of um, RL, um, it's a machine learning tool. It's similar to predictive models, but it's different. So the whole um, learning from the experience of interacting with the environment, it's a big deal here or distinction from predictive models. Receiving feedback uh, in the form of rewards is where you're, you know, define your kind of wh where the north is, what is good, what is bad. And that's what makes the car or agent to learn what to do and achieve the your required outcome. Now, when this policy, what to do, like, for example, how the car drives around and avoid crushing, it sort of happens during reinforcement learning training over time. And what happens in that process of training, it looks at all the observations that it gets or the experiences, the rewards um, or punishments in many cases. And it essentially figures out this cumulative reward strategy over time. And that's the essentially the key feature or the outcome that you're trying to achieve. The components of um, reinforcement learning, um, you've got agent, environment, actions, observations, rewards, policy. So there is key six and most, most of, them, of them is what you hear when you talk about reinforcement learning. So in our context, the agent is the car that drives around the Kala simulator. The environment is a specific town in the Kala simulator where the car is driving around. And this environment allows the see what happens when, for example, the car is driving. And then when you steer right, left or whatever, given where the car is, you'll get the right outcome or the true outcome. The actions is what you send into the environment or effectively what you're trying to learn, like how to steer, how to brake, how to control your throttle. Observations is what comes back from the environment. So, for example, after you've done a time step, uh, and everything like one iteration is called time step. Uh, in this step, uh, what, what happens is the car applies actions, it drives for a fraction of a second, whatever it might be, and it gets the new image after like that fraction of a second. So obviously it will be at a new position. And that's, uh, that observation is the camera footage as of that new position. And let it will go into the new loop as an input. It's like, well, this is the latest. I'm seeing this now. What do I do? What actions I need to take from here? Together with observations, what comes back from the environment is also your rewards. And this is where you come in and define what the reward policy, like the car crashes minus 300 or minus 1000, whatever it is, right? And then, or the car makes distance away from this, uh, from its initiation point. Uh, and you may reward it like plus 10, plus 10, plus 10 every time it moves, you know, a certain number of meters or something like that. Your policy is the what uh, is being learned by the model. And then that policy, obviously, if it improves, it will be saved uh, at the very end. And that's what you use moving forward. That's your that's what you do the whole thing for. That's uh, essentially you how you get the rules, what to do for this image um, and what to do if you see this. Um, that's how the car wants to drive. And that knowledge is in that policy. Now, what happens during training is usually it's, it's a loop. This loop is going through uh, what is called time steps. 
So imagine reinforcement learning sees the image in front of the car. It decides based on the policy, whatever it might be. At the beginning, it's just random actions. The actions are apply the steering angle, apply the throttle, and send it into the environment. So what happens in the environment? The car travels certain distance, and it could be like 20th of a second or something like that, very sh small period. So the you get the feedback what happens that allows you to cal calculate your rewards. Like if you crash, you get a lot of negative points. If you make distance, you get positive points. Whatever you define here, this is where your rules are. This is where your input comes in. And then also you get the new image like after the car moved that minor distance from before to after this time step and that new image goes into the next evolution or next iteration next time step and then how it all happens how how can it actually learn so what happens is um there is episodes or each play and each play is can can uh, play or episode is when you start a car and it drives until it crashes, crashes, or it reaches the end of the episode um, or time limit. That is called an episode. And one episode is made up of multiple time steps. And each time step is like your action, observation, reward combination. So all of that is maintained in within the RL environment or what you're trying to do. And then the, the tricky bit of, bit of um, RL is that mathematics that allow it to learn the optimal cause of action given the image coming in. So it sort of looks at the average and tries to figure out what the best cause of action in certain scenarios, depending on what the front image looks like, okay? The other thing it does is just not purely optimization. Uh, sometimes it also tries to explore new things like um, when it learned like it needs to turn left when the road turns left, but sometimes it still need to apply random action because it may take it to a new direction where there will be more rewards. So it's very clever that way. And obviously random actions are more frequent at the beginning and less frequent at the end, but all of that is taking care of your RL environment, which is why I'm using stable baselines three because everything is already there. I don't want to start programming reinforcement learning from scratch. I've seen a few tutorials. I've tried, it's quite complex. I'd rather use something already there. Okay, so when you define your reward, the important consideration here is how you define it is it's going to either make the RL optimize for your reward or like get to your objective sooner or not, uh, whether it's confusing or not. So if in this, in the case of driverless cars, it could be don't crash. So it's like, as long as you avoid the penalty of crashing into it, that could be your reward. Sometimes if your reward structure is too simple, you need to tweak it. Like in some cases, I've seen this before with, um, with car uh, simulators that the car may decide to go in circle, like lock steering wheel all the way to the left, you know, gas uh, forward, and it just does loops around. And obviously it's not what you want to achieve and you may need to tweak your reward to, uh, to introduce some penalties for that. And the car to avoid learning that as a thing because this thing is like whatever easiest way it will find to maximize your reward it will get there so it doesn't have any morals it's just got your reward rules and that's where you control the whole engine now the main kicker with reinforcement learning is um, ability to continue training a safe model. So it's say, for example, you've got a model uh, that allows the car to drive in the center of the, or in the lane, right? And not crash. But you can continue training that model after changing the reward rules and slightly changing the environment. And that is absolutely awesome feature of reinforcement learning. Why? It allows you to start with something very, um, simple and then increase complexity as you go the important caveat here is that you to be able to continue training the same model you need to uh, have the action and observation structure the same 
what that means like you if you in the future envisaging to learn or to train throttle you need to have throttle even before you're trying to train for it so you need to figure out how to for the model to ignore it and control throttle yourself but you need to have already allowance for for the action space to pass the throttle into the environment and also observation that's when you can't just be playing with image resolution you need to keep it steady so you're not changing because your you, the whole model will rely on the same structure of your actions and the same structure of your observation so if you define uh, in pixels that you're getting back 600 by 800 image it needs to be consistent you can't decide to go 1200 by whatever later right it needs to be the same now example again if you train the car to drive uh, within the lane later you can also start introducing new rewards uh, and in this case for driving in the center of the lane you know if you most likely train the car to drive in the lane it will be very jerky from left to right but then obviously it's not the way to drive and you may need to introduce rewards how to uh, to to keep in the center of the lane and the whole lane driving will be a lot smoother so um, that thing this this feature of reinforcement learning allows you to do that or improve or increase complexity and improve as you go and that will save you a lot of time and that deserves a lot of stand innovation I would say that's why it's so cool now I would you I would encourage you to get into it and uh, I've got some videos how to apply this to uh, autonomous cars and um, driving simulator you're welcome to watch those videos and like and subscribe thanks very much for your time I'll see you later